Okay, so now I'm live. Take two. I am so sorry whoever tried to hop on the live stream at 9 o'clock. I filmed for 15 minutes and I realized that the video was unlisted. So Sharon, thank you so much for letting me know. She let me know in the Facebook group and uh, that the video wasn't showing and I had no idea they would let you go live and have your video as unlisted. It makes no sense at all. So I am so happy you guys stuck around. Uh, please introduce yourself. I'm going to go over to uh, YouTube now and just find the live and make sure that I'm seeing all the comments and stuff. I'm just going to go back. Oh, Clarice, hello. I uh, had a little, a little glitch here because I just filmed a video for 15 minutes and realized that it was unlisted. Hey, Sharon, thank you so much for letting me know about this because I... Um, I was blabbering away, blah, 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 and uh, thinking, hmm, it's strange that nobody's hopping on. And I realized it's because you guys couldn't see me. So that is why. So <laughs> that's why. So now, because I, when I upload, I don't know if any of you guys do YouTube, but when I upload videos, I always upload them as unlisted. So I can edit all the settings and everything. And then when I'm ready to publish, I push publish. But for some reason, um, when when I was doing the live tonight, it went to unlisted, so I'll just delete that one, and I'm going to start all over again. <laughs> so, if you're new to my channel, my name is Heather Boyd, uh, channel Heather Boyd Wire, and every week I do a live stream, and I usually troubleshoot different designs for wire art and jewelry. And I'm back home. Two weeks ago, I was in New York City, and <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, Sharon, I get why you're confused. I was confused, and now I'm it's all good. Uh, last week I was in Ottawa and um, I'm back home. Happy to be back. And what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to show you guys some of my older work. And then at the end, if we have time, I'm going to troubleshoot just a little, a little new design for uh, some earrings. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the screen because we're a little bit behind. And I'll just bring up the camera up here. That should be good. Just let me flip this a little bit and we'll get my pliers in to make sure everything is set up. Get the wire out of the way. So yeah, if you guys want to chat too in the in the comments section, anytime you guys want to have conversations amongst yourself, that's awesome. And if you're not already part of my wire art and jewelry group, please uh, feel, free, uh, feel free to Oh, I wish you could say, I'm sorry I'm late. So if you guys have to go, I totally understand, but we're going to have the replay on YouTube as well. So what I started with the last one is, was I was just uh, showing um, these, these are some old buttons that I made and I know it has nothing to do with wire, but in this live stream, I'm just going to give a little background of how I got started doing the wire art and jewelry. So when I first moved to Montreal in 1989, I was actually making hand painted buttons sort of similar to this. These are actually kind of real buttons, but I was also making some, um, like taking old badges and removing the plastic and making, uh, making hand painted buttons out of them. So I thought I'd just show you guys those for fun. I used to call my uh, business sh buttons uh, just for fun. And uh, I did that for a couple of months. I was selling on the street in Montreal and I'll, I'll actually show you a picture of when I used to sell on the street and it was fun. I did a lot of I did a lot of craft shows and stuff. Actually, this one isn't on the street. This is one from a craft show. Oh, oh, I'm missing some comments there. Hi, this is this is Kat. I just turned in my phone. Awesome. That's great. Hey everybody, whoever everybody who's uh, who's hopping on, that's awesome. So this is an old picture of me at a craft show, probably 25 years ago. I used to sell at a lot of um folk festivals. And um, these, I don't know if you can see them, but my husband's bicycles are on the table there. And I used to always custom make things on the spot. So whenever I did shows, people would come with like an idea or a sketch and I would just make things as I, as I went. I just took special requests. So that was kind of cool. 
And then another thing I used to do is I used to do a lot of sewing projects. So here's some crazy pictures of me wearing these old patchwork jeans. I went through a couple of years where I was making jeans for everybody with little patchwork. And then if you're wondering what I'm doing, I made a uh, heart that or a, a gun that shoots hearts for my nephews because my nephews weren't allowed to have guns in the house. So I made them a little uh, heart gun. And I actually have a tutorial for that on YouTube as well. So I did a lot of really crazy projects and it was it was a lot of fun so but I'm going to fast forward to to some of the wire projects that I've done over the years so here's one I want to start with this one because I used to actually call myself the uh, earring lady because I made mostly earrings so here's one just to show you it's a uh, the jeans are fun, eh? <laughs> the heart, yeah, that's the that's me. I I do still do a lot of arts and crafts. I don't have a lot of time for them, but I'm actually working on a new design for a whoopee cushion because I made one. I have a video for a whoopee cushion, but this was my old logo. So I actually used to print T-shirts with this logo on it, and it, this is the earring lady, and it's a really fun little silhouette of a face, and there's some little dangling uh, beads for the uh, for the earrings. So those are those are really cute. And then I did a lot of, you know, novelty projects as well. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Teletubbies, but when um, my sister's kids were young, and even when Mimi was young, these uh, t Teletubbies were popular on the TV. So these are actually made with wire, and I have a plastic tubing in different colors to to make the color of the Teletubbies. So uh, so these are really these are really fun as well, and uh, I could maybe do some designs to show you guys with some plastic uh, your oldest love them I know Teletubbies were so funny I loved that show it was really cute and uh, and then I did a lot of kids workshops so here's I just pulled out one example I, I saved a lot of them so I used to go into schools and um, uh, after school programs and things and this was so Jenna uh, made these ones and I used to just bring that old electrical wire that was covered in plastic so it was safe for the kids and they would come up with the most beautiful things. I just love working with kids. It was so much fun. And so that's that one. And then sometimes I would bring the wire home to my family and they would have a go at making fun things. So this is these are some things my brother made. Now my brother is a very eccentric kind of inventor type guy. He used to do a lot of electronics and all kinds of different things. So he took the wire and he made these very mechanical kind of structures with hinges. So these are super interesting. I really love this. This this one's more like kind of a ladder thing, but this you could even make a kind of a bracelet like that with the he just made them for fun, but I and I put them on earring hooks so I could wear them, but uh, but this is a really fun concept doing a kind of a hinge type of thing. And then sort of along the same lines is one day I was uh, selling on the street and a man brought by his little son. His son was about probably about six years old and they were fascinated with my work. So I asked the I asked the dad, you know, what what his son was really into. He actually, he must have been less than less than six because I um, I don't think he was really talking much. And so the dad said that he loved uh, plugs like plugging things into outlets although I don't know if he really let his son do that but maybe he had a toy with a little plug or something and so I got totally inspired and I made this structure which is kind of like a necklace and the idea is that it has like a a plug that goes into the springs so it's almost like a kind of a a toy thing and I used to bring it with me every day on the on the street with hopes that Vincenzo would come back for his plug necklace, but he never came back. So I still have this piece that I made almost 30 years ago. And it's just, I love working on pieces like this. They're really, uh, really different. Eh? Yeah, interesting, eh, Sharon? Very different. And then this one's really fun. And this actually might make a nice um, tutorial uh, to do on this channel as well. It's kind of a, a charm type bracelet. And it's almost uh, the same concept as crochet. Like this is sort of a, a chain stitch type of thing made with 20 gauge wire. So I just made a length of kind of a chain stitch. 
and then I formed a little hook on one side and then you could just hook it in like a bracelet and then I had these little uh, metal coin beads and other little beads in there so this is really cool and it makes a nice little sound which is cute so that's a, that's a cool one and then these I do a lot of or I used to do a lot of samples for stores so this was actually for the Canadian um, Museum of Contemporary F Photography the coins are cool, eh, Sharon? Yeah, I like them too. So, so these were samples they commissioned me to make some work for the photography museum in their boutiques. So this was like a little guy with the film, you know, kind of a negative strip like that. And then these are actually the parliament buildings in Ottawa. So Rebecca, hi, how are you? Welcome. Yeah, we were running a little late tonight, but that's that's okay. That was my mistake coming on unlisted, and then I had to redo the, the live stream and come on. Oh, and Andrea's here too. Awesome. That's great. So, and this one is actually really cool, guys. This is um, these little birds. I Mark and I went to Guatemala in around 1990, and I bought a bunch of these little hand-painted birds. And then when I came home, I made some cute little bird cages. Now, they're awfully large for earrings, but they're they're really kind of cute. So that was a project that I that I made. And then I'm just going to dig through. I have a whole bunch of old pieces. And I, I actually haven't really sorted through them, but I thought I'd just pull them out and show you guys some of this stuff. So this is one that was uh, another sample for stores. This was, um, this was... The bird cages are neat, eh? Yeah, I like them too. So this is actually a totem pole. And these ones, I don't know if you've heard of, there's a Canadian artist called Emily Carr. And the National Gallery of Canada had an exhibition of her work uh, in the 90s. And they commissioned me to make a whole bunch of uh, earrings with the, the themes from her paintings. So she paints a lot of totems. Uh, she lived on the on the west coast near Vancouver and was inspired by a First Nations artwork. So she has a lot of totems. This is like a raven from one of the totems. So these are all actually one of a kind samples. You could see I used to make my own display cards. So this is like a, a display card that's kind of falling apart now. So that was that was for the um, the Emily Carr show at the gallery. Uh, these ones are fun. These ones are they're actually a little bit of a premonition because these are uh, the reason they look a little crooked is I have a necklace similar to this with a person riding a bike, but these ones I actually made blindfolded. So that was that was kind of cool. And uh, about a month or two ago, I actually did a collab video with my friend. My new friend, Claudia Negrelli, who is visually impaired, and I, I made some uh, blindfolded uh, jewelry as well. I made a little bike, a little simple bike. So, but this, it made me think of this, of doing that many, many years ago. And yeah, so there's some more. I did a lot of crazy stuff, like just little dollar signs. That's with the electrical wire. There's more kids work. So this is a, um, probably my nephew. Yeah, this is my nephew, Travis. So he made this star. He was probably about, I don't know, six or eight, and now he's in his 30s. <laughs> so that was a while ago. And let me just see. So another kid's work. This is actually a recycled skipping rope. And let's see, more samples. This was also for the photography museum. There's a train, a little cow. Sometimes I like to look back on these and um, and just to give me ideas for different things to do. So here's some little rings. That's a ring with a little bicycle on it. And more totems. Yeah, I have some. And this very simple type of thing. This is like a, a hammered wire that, that's pressed. But something like that is super simple and very, you know, very beautiful. There's another person on the bike. And, oh, this, actually, this one was a really... Just let me see. They're they're kind of mixed up here. Oh, this is cute. This is this is Mark made this one. That's the old fashioned bike, kind of similar to what we did with the um, last week with the buttons, with the button bikes. Or no, that was two weeks ago in New York. That was seems like a long time ago. And then here's a, another one of a kind one, which is basically a wheel. It was sort of a like a wheel for a bike that I tried to do with spokes, and then I turned it into a bracelet. 
So I have so many items here. What I, what I might try to do is actually uh, photograph some of these and make an album. That would be interesting. And I could, I could post some pictures in the, in the Y Art and Jewelry Makers Club. This one, unfortunately, is tarnished, but this is sterling silver wire. And my husband made uh, me this as a gift. So it's just with like some little amethyst beads and like a little chain thing. I'm just going to quickly look through some of these, some more of these, and see what I have. This was another, actually this one, this one is interesting. This was just a silhouette of a face, but you can see it's made with a thicker wire. And I think someone posted in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club that she had some wire like this. And this is, it's just like sort of a, a thin piece of wire. And... I actually use this to cut out Fimo. I don't know if you guys have ever worked, ever worked with modeling clay, but I used it almost like a cookie cutter. So I made my own cookie cutters to cut out different shapes. And then you would bake the Fimo and then I, I just put it on a hook just to have a way to display it. So oh, someone wrote, use ketchup to clean silver. Wow, that's a great idea. I didn't know that you could do that. That's really interesting because I find the silver, it tarnishes so much that it's really hard to keep it, uh, it's really hard to keep it nice. So let's see what else we have. Oh my goodness, here's a fun one too. Looking at all this old stuff. So let me take this off the card so we can see it. So I did, for fun, one time I did a no smoking uh, earring and this, I guess I did a, went off on a tangent and made a whole bunch of different ones. So I have no smoking, no drinking, no junk food. <laughs> well, I got two out of, I got two out of the three, right? I'm afraid I still like my sweets. So, so that's a fun one. And that's with the red uh, plastic tubing. And then here's another one with a little camera and a little canoe. And oh, there was this is the one that I wanted to to spin off because my husband had a friend. His name was Alain, and he was very eccentric, and he used to play with the wire sometimes. So I remember he had made this piece with the spring, and he had actually melted wax and stuck it in the middle. But it's funny. This is the one that I wanted to pull out and to uh, to spin off of that one because I thought it would be really cool to do a simple earring with a spring and a bead. So why don't we get started with that? Because uh, I could really be here till midnight with you guys looking at all my old stuff. So let's start with that idea. Let's get out the tools. And then I'm going to show you how we can make something similar to that. And then we'll just go from there. So I have, this is my favorite wire. It's like a 20 gauge aluminum wire. I'm gonna cut like a pretty long piece because it's always better to cut too much than too little. And so what I was thinking to do is uh, just start with a spring. And I know when I do kids workshops, they really love just making springs. It's cool, eh, Clarice, that one? It's very interesting. And uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, I, th I like the idea because it's sort of 3D. So what I'm gonna try to do is just start with the, make like a little spring shape. So to make the spring, it's very easy. And actually the spring is a great thing just to know like how to make something like this because I'm sure you could spin off and do a lot of different things. Uh, actually, one of my flower designs is very similar to this, like where you just create a spring and then you spread the, um, the circles apart. Oh, you know which one is like that? Is I made a design for, it's called the Flower of Life. Uh, in French, it's La Fleur de la Vie. So if you look a few videos back on my channel, you'll see actually you start it exactly like this. I forgot about that. You just create the spring and then you spread it apart and it makes a really nice design. Clarice, you would like that one too because it's very, it's very simple but very detailed. So if you just start with a spring like that, what I was thinking is we could try to do something not quite like that, but sort of similar. And as always, I haven't tried this before, so we're just gonna wing it. So if we just pull one edge up like that, and then the idea would be to kind of 
bring it around. So maybe what we would have to do is actually hold this in the middle again and bring this around. Yeah, that seems to work a little bit better. But I think what you'll have we would have to do is actually go bring it a little bit beyond that one like that. And what I could have done is probably made like used a smaller a circle like a smaller like I used a pen but I bet if you used a bamboo skewer or something it would work really well as well and then here what we want to do is just we're going to get it started with the pliers so imagine like kind of halfway across the top of that circle there if we just start it like that and then we're going to pull it around and let's just pull it around like this and we want to make sure this wire is long enough we can put a bead on it. Okay, where do you buy that big quantity of aluminum wire? Oh, that one. Yeah, that one we got, that one I got a long time ago. So i actually not even sure they sell that size anymore. But you can buy large quanti larger quantities of aluminum wire. Um, I usually now buy them on Etsy. And they don't necessarily sell them on a roll, but they sell them by feet. You can buy quite large quantities. I could definitely look into that and see what I can find for you on Etsy. Because that one that my husband bought, that one many, many years ago, and we're actually still using the ones he bought a long time ago. I think he bought them from a company that was in liquidation. So, but I'll definitely look into that for you guys. So here we go. So we have like, it almost looks like a donut type of shape. So my idea was just to, um, I think I'll just finish it up at the top. I could put a couple of beads at the top as well. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try a couple of beads and see. Let me just see if we try a bead at the top. Let's see what it looks like. So if we put a bead like that and then a bead at the bottom, I'm just going to play around with it and see what looks good. And then if we put a bead here, it's kind of interesting. Or we could just not put a bead. Maybe I won't put a bead for now. I think I'm just going to keep it simple for now. But you get the idea that you could actually do quite a bit with this. And then, so always you need a loop at the top. So let's just bend that like that. And then bend that one around like that okay like that and then we're going to you just hold the top and then bend this around a few times like that and we're going to clip the end so we have the beginnings so this could actually be an earring or a, um, a pendant and then let's put a bead in the middle I find that one a little bit dark let's see if we can how about a nice I know Clarice, you like pink. So how about a big bright pink one? There's fuchsia. Actually, that's a beautiful bead. That's a um, that's called a miracle bead. So what you want to do is just kind of I'm going to show you on the side. We're just put it in there, and then we're just going to kind of center it in there. And then let me just see how I could finish this off because we could just bend it around. Okay, if we just bend it to the back, and then we're going to clip it a little bit okay we're careful not to clip the other wires okay and then we want to get our pliers and just bend it because you want to hold it you want it to hold in place so this is a little bit tricky you might have to spread that and then return it back on itself a little bit because the idea is you just want it not to come undone so we just bent it in there and then we just go like that and that is actually kind of sweet. Yeah, and then you might have to just adjust it a little bit. But it's it's kind of cute like that. And that could be earrings. Uh, you could you could have made this end a little longer and put multiple beads on there. That would have been really cool. So, so that's a cool idea. And then um, maybe while I'm here, I'm going to show you guys how to make the hook out of wire as well. Because that's really interesting as well so let's let me get some more wire I should have brought some more flexible wire down because I would have the color's pretty eh yeah I really like it so I should have brought the the softer wire to make that bracelet with but I think I'll do another tutorial on uh, how to make that charm bracelet because it's really pretty maybe I'll do that this week because I like that one a lot 
But just for example, to show you guys, if ever you want to make uh, findings, like to make hooks and clasps, why don't I show you that at the same time since I'm here? So you would get a piece of wire, and then what you would do is just bend the wire like this. How are the miracle beads different from the other beads? So the miracle beads are, they're actually made out of um, acrylic and they, it's hard to tell on the camera, but they have a real kind of shimmer shine to them. They almost, they almost look like they would glow, but they're, they've got sort of, it's hard to tell. They have a kind of a depth and a glowing quality to them, but they're not uh, glass. They're plastic and they're very lightweight. So, so they're, they're really interesting beads actually. So to make the hook, we're going to have that about an inch long. And then I'm going to just hold it with the flat pliers, take this little end and bend it around a couple of times. Okay, like that. And you're welcome, Sharon. Yeah, so uh, any anytime you guys have questions, just feel free to ask me. And if you think of questions after the fact, just ask them in the, uh, in the Facebook group. So here we're gonna start like this. And then I'm gonna show you, like if you wanna make a hook that you can attach say to a bracelet or a necklace or something. So I'm just, this is gonna be where you would attach the jump ring to go on a bracelet or attach your cord. And then I, I always try to bend it around over the little rough end a bit like that. So we're going to just clip that, okay. And then to make the hook part, okay. There we go. So Wes is there. Hey, Wes, how are you? You hopped on. Wes, you, I was actually going to shout you out. I'm happy you came on because I just saw your video about uh, Tim Hortons and that it's uh, send a kid to camp day at Tim Hortons if you buy a coffee. And so after this live stream, I'm going to go to Tim Hortons and get a coffee and support the, the kids at the camp. I think that's a great idea. And I totally didn't uh understand about it uh until i saw your videos so i super appreciate it yeah i'm good yeah i'm doing great i'm doing great wes yeah it's always great to see your videos i love them yeah such a positive person so now we're going to bend this and we're going to do the hook like this and voila you have a little hook that you can use on a uh, like a necklace or, or a bracelet or something like that. And I'll just show you guys. Here's the bracelet. And I, I did a hook like that on the end of the bracelet. So that worked really well. So I think I'll definitely do a, a tutorial for how to do this bracelet because it's really, it, it really is very cute. No, I like it a lot. It's really cute. And then other than that, maybe what I'll do is, how about I show you guys this one? How about I show you guys how to do the, the one with the lady? I haven't made that one in a long time. So let's give it a shot. It's been a while. So I'll get my wire, the 20 gauge wire. <laughs> okay. You want me to do that one, Sharon? Vote vote for the, the earring lady. There we go. And I, I really forget how much wire I use for this one. I didn't make this in a long time. This style, beautiful. It's cool, eh? What's... Gitan. What is Gitan, Wes? I'm not quite sure what that is. So there we go. So let's do the... We're going to start with the lips. Okay. Can you add bird cages to the list? Is, oh, you like the bird cages? I actually have some different designs. Let's let's show people the bird cages again. I, I have some other designs for the bird cages too. So yeah, maybe I'll do a whole tutorial about making the bird cages. They're really cute. And I've actually seen people that have made little nests with uh, little eggs and birds. Oh, I want to do that one. Actually, I don't know if I have that one already. Uh, I think it's Gypsy. Not sure. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So let's uh, let's do the, the lips of the wire or the earring lady. We're just going to bring this up like this. I hope I cut the wire long enough. I should have. And then, so I will start in the middle. It's just the easiest way to go. And this, this design is quite symmetrical for this one. So it's better just to start in the middle. So we're gonna bring that in like that. And I just, if you can tell, I just bent the wire to the front 
like that and then bend it up okay and then to form the top of the lips I'm going to bend it to the back okay so we're going to bend it to the back and then we're going to do this one bend it to the back like that okay and so there's I don't know if you can see there's the lips and then to bend them behind we're just going to hold it I'm going to show you I'm going to bend it behind like that and then bend it and push this up so already we have the lips like that now you could even make larger lips and just make lip earrings too that would be kind of cute and then we're going to form the nose so for the nose we're just going to bend it out and then in and up and then the same on the other side it's a little tricky but we're going to bend it out it's always a little tricky getting it to be perfectly symmetrical so we're going to go like that and then up okay and even if it's a little off that's okay so here's the nose and then to make the eyes we want to just bend it where the top of the nose would be this one too we're just going to bend it where the top of the nose would be and then we're going to form the eyes and I think the eyes look really cute when they're double circles so what I'll do is I'll just do the the large circle first on both sides we're just going to form like a large-ish circle okay oop that one's a little smaller so let's make it a little bit bigger okay a little bit bigger perfect and let's get that one about the same wiggle it around a bit so see the eyes look a little plain like make it look so easy yeah Sharon it's uh, 30 years of bending wire that makes it look quite easy but I could tell you when I first designed this one it probably took me weeks or maybe even months to get it right so so you guys are benefiting from uh, many many years of experience and I, I just hope I, I am able to teach it in a way that's uh, that's clear so see we've done double circles for the eyes and then now we need to form ears so we can hang the earrings down so we're going to bend it down and then I'm going to use a slightly larger pliers so we have like a nice round circle for the earrings to dangle and then up and across and then what I'm going to do for this so once I have the ear done <laughs> there we go and we're going to bend this to the front okay so let's just fix that up a little okay so there's one ear and then let's do the other one same way bend it down and then we're going to form hopefully it's about the same length oh well nobody has a perfectly symmetrical face right we'll just hope for the best and then like that and then we're going to bend the wire to the front so that will be where the hair starts so here we have looks pretty good eh? looks very very similar to this one so now we have to form the hair so for the hair I'm going to use the larger round pliers and we're going to bend in and then we're going to bend it out and the hair you can use your discretion how you want to do it I do I did like three loops for the hair so back and forth three times like that oh I cut the wire way too long so that's good better too long than too short okay so there we have one side and then now the trick is to get it semi-symmetrical so we're gonna bend it here okay you could always draw out a template if you wanted to but the looser the better I, I like things when they look a little looser I tend to make things I'm quite stiff with my stuff just just that's the style okay there we go practice with an etch-a-sketch twist <laughs> that's so funny yeah I've tried etch-a-sketches I'm, I'm not so good at that thanks guys you, you guys are awesome you're like my cheerleaders I love it so there we go so let's do this one and try to get it semi-symmetrical and then back down 
I'm actually going to a YouTube Montreal event tomorrow. Are you going, West, to that uh, Saint Cassette? Because uh, I'm, I'm going to bring a bunch of my things because my friend Claudia, who's visually impaired, uh, she always likes to feel this work because she can't see it. So I bring her all my samples and she can feel uh, what they're what they're like. Okay, so here's here's the lady. She's coming along. Oh, you're working. Oh, that's too bad. Well, one day we have to connect again. Definitely. There's there's going to be more events in the summer, too. So here we go. So let's just wind this around and then we're going to make her earrings. So that'll be the fun part. And we might even have enough wire left to do the earrings. So I might not have to cut any more after all. So here we go. So here's always have to finish it off in a way that she can hang. So now we're going to make a loop. And need my round pliers. Go back and then around like that. There's the loop. Bend it around a couple of times. I love doing these live streams because I have no idea in advance sometimes what I'm going to do. This is a total fluke that I found that and that we're making these, but this is fun. So there we go. Here's the lady. So now she needs some earrings. So what kind of earrings should we get her? I'm just trying to see what I have. Let's do a nice, a nice color. So I'm just digging in my... How about vote for either blue or, let's see, we have blue and we have pink. What color earrings do you guys think she should have? You can let first person to respond. I also have pearls, although the pearls don't show up so much. Pink. Oh, yes. Thanks, Wes. Awesome. Executive decision. So do I have two? That's the trick. Yes, I do have two. Awesome. There we go. So now for the earrings. I think we have enough wire left over. So let's just take our leftover wire and oh, it's uh, it's unanimous, pink, awesome. So let's take this, we're gonna just bend the end a little bit like that and then up, okay. So this is just so you can, so the bead won't fall off. If you actually have um, a head pin, which is basically looks like a straight pin, you can use that as well. But because all I brought with me to this, uh, the live stream was just wire and beads so I'm going to do it this way so here the bead is sitting on there and then what I'm going to do is take the pliers hopefully you guys can see so I'm going to bend it back and then I'm going to bend this around like that so it's got a nice little loop and then we'll just put her earrings on her ears like that and then use my smaller pliers just to continue the circle. Okay. Like that. And then hold it with the flat pliers so it doesn't wiggle around. And bend it around a few times. And even if you want to do like I did with the other ones and make a little bit of a cap on the top, you just bend it a little more to make like a little, a little cap on the top. And then maybe bend it. So it ends at the back so you can't see the end. And then we'll give it a clip. Okay. So there's one earring. That's pretty cool. Dangling. And let's do the other one. So same idea. We do have enough wire, which is amazing. Hopefully it's long enough to do the spiral. And so we're going to do a little loop like this. Last week after the live stream, we went out for ice cream. And so tonight we're going to go out for coffee. So thanks to Wes. So if, we, if we're up all night, Wes, I'm just going to blame you. So because <laughs> unless they have decaf and then I'm going to be fine. So we'll see. So the same idea, we're going to bend it back and around like that. Nice, generous loop. And then we're going to stick it on her other ear. There we go. And this is so much fun. This is really nostalgic for me making this because I probably haven't made this design in 20 years. Like it's been a long time, but I, I love it. It's one of my favorite ones. So we go around like this. Oh, I have another really fun one that I used to do too. I, I don't think I would have time. I might have time. I'm going to see if I have time for it. So here we go like this. And we're going to clip it. And I don't have my earring hooks on me. But here is the idea. So maybe, how can I bring it up so you guys can see if I put it on the back of one of these 
photos. I'll put it on here and then I'll bring it up. So there we go. There. So that's, what do you think guys? Looks pretty good. Looks like that one. And like I said, if I had a hook, I could put it on a hook. That would be awesome. And uh, that's it. So I think I think I'm going to leave it at that for tonight. Let me flip my screen again so I can see you guys. Whoop, let me just flip it. Okay, whoop, that's my messy basement. There we go. Perfect. So let me bring the, the round here. Yeah, so I think that's good for tonight. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching you guys. That was a lot of fun. Uh, again, I apologize for the first uh, 15 minutes that uh, we had a little technical glitch, but now I know how to fix that. Don't go on live stream on unlisted. Nobody will see it. <laughs> so now I know it's all good. And yeah, so coming up is going to be, I'm going to do um, a tutorial for a birdcage and a tutorial for the bracelet. And then if there was anything else in uh, that I showed you guys today that you want me to show you how to make, I'll definitely uh, make them. And thank you everybody for hopping on the live stream i just love doing these they're so much fun and uh if you guys uh, aren't already members of the wire art and jewelry club uh, my facebook group that would be awesome if you could join and i will um uh, after this upload after this video uploads i'm going to put in the description uh, resources like a link to the Facebook page and uh, maybe a link to where to buy the wire and any other things if you guys have questions just ask in the comments and yeah Hank thanks everybody for hopping on and we'll definitely see you next week and in the meantime we'll see you in the Facebook group so oh, thank you enjoy the coffee yes I'll let you know if I sleep tonight <laughs> thanks everybody we'll talk to you really soon